Hello, N4H&H with you here. Uh, look at that official Yesu's website, the FT710. So yesterday I put out a video because, well, this video was a rumor yesterday. Uh, approximately an hour ago, John Cruck from Yesu USA made this official and, um, and mentioned that it's even on their website, and there it is. If you go to yesu.com, there will be a link at the top, and you can click on that link, and it'll take you to this page. Uh, the link will say FT710 AESS. So here it is, the FT710. And if you're wondering what this is over my eye, I, let me get that out of the way so that doesn't bug you. I had eye surgery this morning, and I can't uh, accidentally touch my eye, scratch my eye, rub my eye, or anything like that. So that's why that barrier is there. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm still not seeing very well yet because it's too early. Uh, my right eye, well, you've seen me before, I wear glasses, so my right eye is not seeing great either. So what, mostly what I'm looking at on the screen right now um, are, well, I, I'm seeing orange and I'm seeing that radio and I'm seeing some text that I can't read. But these are the specs that I sent out earlier today to the Patreon team members. Uh, so they got kind of a, you know, a preview of this. But like I said, about an hour ago, John Crook made it official. So if you watched my video yesterday, I went through the, all the, the display, I went through the knobs and buttons, and uh, most everything I speculated yesterday is accurate, but let me clear one thing up. Uh, the Yesterday, what I showed you, and this was the, uh, the releases that were available yesterday, said there's going to be a 100-watt version, a 10-watt version, a 50-watt version, and a 10-watt version. That is true, but the 50-watt version and the 10-watt version are not for the U.S. market. Uh, we will get a 100-watt version. There will not be like a 10-watt QRP version of this radio. So uh, now let me give you a little idea how big it is. It's a little over 9 inches across, a little, about a little over 9 inches deep, and, and 3.1 inches tall. The display is 4.3 inches diagonally. And as I showed you yesterday in detail, the display is basically lifted from the FTDX10. Well, look at this. The whole radio is. Um, but you know, it's smaller and the third slot over about, if you can see where my mouse is pointing on the FTDX 10, that's roofing filters here. It is DNF, uh, which is, so it's a quick way to get to your auto notch rather than having to press the function button and get it from the function menu. I guess they just needed a filler, you know, to put in there. Uh, so and if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I keep it real. Um, I'm going to say something negative. Because there's so many great things about the Yesu radio, so it's easier for me to mention when I find something negative. That's so. Just take that in, in, as the um, uh, to under, as an understanding of why I say a negative thing. It's, I, it's just quicker to tell you what's wrong than what what all is right, because there's a lot right. But on the FTDX10, the dot, the digital notch filter introduces distortion into the received audio, especially you know of stronger signals. It's it's more noticeable there. Maybe they've um, solve that in this radio we'll find out because they've put that dnf right there as front and center of the display so uh you know over on the left side like i mentioned yesterday just like an ftdx10 button arrangement knob arrangement here is different uh we don't know yet whether the knob, uh, buttons here are backlit yesterday like i like i mentioned yesterday um but um hey it it looks like it's a head-to-head -head, uh competitor of the ic7300 a direct sampling receiver. It is not a hybrid. It does not have this the dual super het um, architecture that the FTDX10 has. And John even mentioned in passing in his uh, release that um, it is not a contest class radio. That that right there says a lot because uh, without that hybrid technology, it's not going to have the uh, reciprocal mixing dynamic range, the RMDR score that an FTDX10 will have. Uh, so what Yesu has probably done, in fact, John uh, mentioned this in, in his release, it's going to rely on bandpass filters and, and the DSP. And that's about the same as what the IC7300 does. It, it has bandpass filters and the rest of the filtering relies solely on the uh, DSP. Now, it's been my experience that the DSP and the FTDX10 is superior to the IC7300. I mean, I'm not saying that to be mean. I don't hate ICOM. It's just, it is what it is. You know, I mean, the ICOM radio has been out for, for uh, quite a number of years. So, um, naturally, it's not going to be as up to date as the FTDX10. But from what John is saying, this borrows from the FTDX10's DSP and will have some front end filtering. 
but beyond that, it's direct sampling. And that's going to be your reason that 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 would be the reason that it's not going to be a contest class radio. So so what is it? Well, the way John characterized it was this. The FTDX 101 D and MP, that's the replacement of the FTDX 5000. The FTDX 10 was the replacement uh, for the FTDX 3000 D. As a matter of fact, I was talking about that on the channel back when this when the FTDX 10 came out. I said, well, this thing is priced $100 less. At the time when it came out, it was priced $100 less than an FTDX 3000D. So I said, hmm, that's going to be the end of the 3000D. And shortly thereafter, the FTDX 3000D was discontinued. And John explained the FTDX 10 fills the spot of the FTDX 3000D. Well, you may remember that there was a uh, economy version of the FTDX 3000D called the FTDX 1200. It wasn't down conversion. Um, it could not use the optional mu tuning preselectors. Um, but and it, so it was up conversion. Uh, but but it looked very much like the FTDX 3000D. Well, John explained that this radio, the FT710, will fill that slot. So this is going to be an economized version of an FTDX 10, if you will. All right, well, there you go. It, it is official, the FT710, 100 watts, uh, built-in antenna tuner. Again, very much an FTDX10 without the superhet uh, portion of the receiver, so it's not a hybrid. It will be uh, strictly a direct sampling uh, transceiver. I think it's cute. Um, I think it'll it'll fit size-wise uh, possibly as a mobile. They're not saying it's a mobile. As a matter of fact, John mentioned we're not calling it a mobile. But at 3.1 inches tall, 9 across and 9 deep, I could probably fit that in my truck. Uh, I really could. And it's nice that it has an internal antenna matching unit. Although, you know, I try to run, um, you know, antennas that are resonant. But, uh, you know, on the band edges, I sometimes need the uh, tuner. Even, you know, if you've seen the videos of my FT891, I have the FC50. I sometimes need the tuner to just touch up the band edges. That's why I call these internal tuners a touch-up tuner because they can't correct more than a 3 to 1 SWR. And I'm sure that's going to be the case with this tuner. It'll probably just be, you know, the, a copy of the one that's in the FTDX10. But, you know, think of that. I think that could, maybe they'll sell a mobile mounting bracket. It'll probably be optional, but I, I believe I could fit that mobile at nine, a little over nine across, nine deep, and 3.1 uh, inches tall. So FT710 is a reality I appreciate John bringing that uh, information to us. Well, it was running so rampant on the web, it's, it, the way he was talking, he was mobile. So I think he just felt like he had to go ahead and get this out there and, and, uh, d and also dispel some of the uh, rumor mill information that was not correct. So I appreciate John doing that. All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot for watching my channel. Thank you to the support team, the Patreon support team. They bring these videos to you. Without them, I couldn't do it. If you'd like to join that team, Go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Patreon, patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Uh, join at any level. Uh, it'd be much appreciated. You then uh, pat yourself on the back because you will be one of the people helping me bring these videos uh, out. And, uh, hey, uh, would you please consider subscribing to the channel? And if you do subscribe, click that notification bell so you won't miss another video. I plan to keep you posted as more information comes out about this radio. John did promise there is more information to come. If you're wondering when these are supposed to be available, let me point that out. Um, September is the target. It is currently going through FCC type acceptance, so that is the delay as usual when they want to release a radio to the U.S. market. So right now the target date is sometime in September to be able to get one of these radios. John mentioned that some of the retailers may start accepting advance orders. So let me get that out there for you as well. But again, if you'll just uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, click the notification bell, I will notify you the moment I hear anything. And uh, hey, also do me a favor, share this video with friends on uh, social media, text message, email, uh, people that you think might be interested in this uh, information. And again, thanks for watching the video. I certainly do appreciate you guys who have supported my channel for now, well, well over two and a half years. Uh, thanks so much. And 73 from N4 H&H. &H.